it isn't just fringe candidates who are supporting Trump's big lie. We also have people way up on the political Republican food chain. Steve Scalise was asked about the results of the election. And here is what he said, and you'll also see what he refuses to say. So I've been very clear from the beginning. If you look at a number of states, they didn't follow their state passed laws that govern the election for president. That is what the United States Constitution says. They don't say that the states determine what the rules are. They say the state legislatures determine the but rules. But the states all certified. Of states, they didn't the, follow those state legislative rules. The, the states but they all didn't certified. follow those legislative rules. Right, but at the end of the day, are we gonna follow what the Constitution says or not? I hope we get back to what the Constitution says, but clearly in a number of states, they didn't follow those legislatively. So you think the election was stolen? What I said is there are states that didn't follow their legislatively set rules. That's what the United States Constitution says. And I think there are a lot of people that want us to get back to what the Constitution says we should be doing, not just with elections, with a lot of other things too. And then there are some people that want to just ignore what the Constitution says and do their own thing. Okay, so Sabrina, let me ask you a question. So that's uh, Steve Scalise, someone that, um, you know, was big up in you know, Republican leadership in the House. Um, there, he keeps saying they didn't follow the rules. But when asked, was it stolen? He won't say that it was stolen. Do you prefer this weaselly, like, you know, like, I want you to believe that I don't think it was fair, but I won't say it because then I'll get in trouble. Um, is that better or worse than if he had just said, no, it was stolen? Biden's an illegitimate president. He stole the whole damn thing. It was a big corrupt con. Which do you, which do you prefer out of the two? I guess I would probably just prefer the outright one, which clearly we weren't going to get because he had so many opportunities. Like he was, mm-hmm. he was asked point blank, "Oh, was it stolen? Uh, was it stolen?" And after like what the second or third time, clearly he's not going to say it. So yeah, it, it would have been preferable, but either way, the, I feel like the results still the same. Yeah, you know, um, he not, not only didn't say that. There was quite a bit he didn't say. Uh, he didn't say specific laws that hadn't been followed. And um, look, you, you might say that maybe that's that's asking too much that after uh, 11 months, they would have a piece of evidence to point to. But, but you shouldn't really be shocked that he wasn't able to cite a specific law in a specific state. He was confused about his entire point. His point there was it doesn't matter that the state certified it, the state laws weren't followed. And at the end of the day, we do have to follow the Constitution. Well, wait, which is it? You're saying state laws, you're not citing any federal law that was broken. You explicitly say it was state law. The fact that the states then certified it according to their laws, that doesn't contradict your point because we're not following the Constitution, which doesn't govern the state laws. State laws are separate. They even have their own Constitution. He's not even pointing to that. The dude seems fundamentally very confused about exactly what case he's supposed to be making for why this election um, wasn't valid. But um, you also have uh, the fact that there you have uh, you know Chris Wallace, and he had said that he wasn't going to have on people that lied about the election. He's now finessing that because all of the Republican leaders, other than maybe Mitch McConnell, I think he says the election was fair, maybe. Um, won't acknowledge that it was fair. And so he either bans the ball on principle or he can't have on any high ranking Republicans. He's decided that he's gonna bring them on, but go hard at them. Um, now, Sabrina, Sabrina, you've seen a version of that. Uh, did he go hard enough there to justify bringing on people that he knows are going to lie? No, I don't think so. It's like, sure, you asked him like point blank, like was you know the election stolen? But then where do you go from there? Because clearly they're gonna keep giving you the runaround, and he does not seem to actually be pressing them. And I think he he knows he's not really gonna get you know a clearly defined answer. But you need guests. But is he yeah. just not gonna have people on then? Of course not. Yeah. So I, I think he probably expected it, but um. Yeah, there was not nearly enough pressure. I get, I get that you need guests, but like I, I kind of <laughs> think like if I, if I brought you on every time you manage to work into whatever we're talking about that the world's actually flat and you'll that's the <laughs> hill you'll die on. I feel like at some point there's other people. 
<laughs> Come on, I don't think we need guest fab path, the whole flat earth thing. Um, don't worry, you're not a flat earther, so you're totally cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, I look again, as I said at the intro of this whole thing, we try not to talk about this too much. There's stuff like this every day, but I don't want people to forget while we focus on all the other important stuff with the infrastructure bill, the pandemic, and the debt ceiling, we got a Brilliant currents every day driving us crazy. They are laying the foundation to steal the election in the future. That is happening at all levels. Established Republicans, new candidates, and the guy they're almost certainly going to run for president again. And I want people to be prepared for that. And I want you to put pressure on our leaders now to take it seriously. There are things that we can actually do. The For the People Act actually would help fight back against some of the legislative maneuvers that they're doing right now in a number of states to make our elections less secure. Um, and right now, they ain't even talk about passing that anymore like there was a few months ago. We need to be putting pressure on them so that they actually do that. Anyway, Sabrina, final question for you. At this point, how worried are you about future elections? I'm, I am worried, like what we were talking about five minutes ago. I think that a lot more, uh, Zany characters are are going to <laughs> are going to keep running because they see that it's working and they are kind of validating um, some of these more like outrageous uh, conspiracies, you know, that have been popping up on Facebook or truthteller.eagle.gun, you know, like so <laughs> it's it's really validating for them and. Apparently it is reachable, so I am terrified for future elections. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.